This week marks the 80th birthday of a towering figure in the movie business, Sir Michael Caine. He first made a mark in British cinema in the 1960s with films like Zulu, The Ipcrest File and Alfie. All told, he's made more than 100 pictures, some brilliant, others not so good. But what nobody can deny on the occasion of his 80th birthday is that he is an extremely gifted actor with an unforgettable screen presence. At one point, he was the young, debonair leading man. Now, at 80, he's an elder statesman in a youthful business. Even a decade ago, he could find he was the oldest actor at work on a movie set. You are a very, very experienced actor. Obviously, you work with younger actors. Do you find that you still have a lot to learn, that you can look at younger actors and actually learn something from them? No. <laughs> I teach. <laughs> What happens is, is when you're a very young actor, unknown, which I was for too long a time as far as I was concerned, you arrive on the set in a state of almost paralytic fear, in absolute awe and terror of the star. And that's what you've got to do, is you've got to bring everybody down, you know. Or you may be such an ego, you arrive and you couldn't give a toss about the star, which means that you have no nerve, sense, no sensitivity, and you're probably a very bad actor, and you're not going to come back. <laughs> Michael Caine isn't stuffy or pretentious. He's down to earth, and he speaks his mind. Colleagues in the business see him as affable. You seem very reasonable and very easygoing with people. Do you ever throw tantrums when you're making movies? Never, never. I have a terrible temper, which I, I, I if I ever lose it, it's, it's a terrible thing. And I, I regret it immediately, uh, um, but I never, never, ever lose my temper in, in a film. And I don't let anyone else do it either. Not with me around. You don't lose your temper on a movie. It's got to be fun. It's got to be relaxed. He's not an actor who's made a name for himself through political activism, but he has inserted himself into the political arena. At the time of the last general election in Britain, he gave his support to David Cameron on the Conservative leader's plans for non-compulsory national service for all 16-year-olds. With his working-class roots, he has compassion for those less well-off, but no patience for people living irresponsibly of government benefits. I mean, politically, I'm an extreme right socialist or an extreme left conservative. I've always been somewhere in that because I, I believe in the capitalist system. But I come from working class poor and I can't believe that you can leave people to rot. So I pay taxes quite happily to help people who are going to be left to rot, but not to help, you know, uh, 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 um, layabouts. But it's not really politics where Michael Caine has put his energies. It's his acting that's been paramount. Do you ever find that you devalue what you do, that you don't think it's terribly important being an actor? No, um, no I, I do think it's important to me to be an actor. I suppose we have to be there. The entertainment has to be there. This is some total of what you do as a person. <laughs> No word on how Sir Michael Caine will be spending his 80th birthday. His representatives say he's not doing any press in connection with the event. For his fans, he will always be truly great. A man who's created some indelible screen characters and a body of work spanning more than five decades that's meant a great deal to a large number of people. <laughs>